Today, we are determining the geometry factor. What does that mean? In a typical nuclear chemistry lab, we work with very small radioactive samples that are usually small in terms of volume. Radioactivity is emitted isotropically, meaning the same amount is radiated in all directions. Sure, for alphas and betas, you can realistically shield them so that they don't appear to radiate in all directions, but this is not the point today. A very small cesium 137 sample, due to the isotropic nature of the radiation, can be considered a point source in this case. A detector used for measuring has a finite detection area. If you know the area and the distance to the source, you can imagine a sphere around the source at that distance, which has a surface area, and the detector covers only a portion of that surface. From this difference, you could calculate how much radiation are you missing because the detector cannot cover the entire sphere. From that, you could also calculate the actual activity of the sample. Since you know how much you've measured, you can use the geometry factor to deduce what portion of the total activity you've detected, assuming that the detector has captured everything, which is of course not the case. The procedure is quite simple. You measure a cesium 137 standard sample for one minute, three times in each position. Each position is measured three times to average the results for better counting statistics. You also measure the distance from the sample to the detector and the diameter of the detector, which is 2.5 centimeters. So the radius is 1.2 centimeters, which is more useful. That's it. How big is our detector? It has an area of pi times r squared, which is 4.52 cm squared, with a radius of r equals 1.2 cm. In the first position, we have a sphere with a radius of 1.5 cm. Thus, the surface area of imagined sphere is 4 times pi times r squared, which is 28.27 cm squared. This means our detectors covers only 4.52 divided by 28.27, which is 15.99% of the surface area. Our theoretical geometry factor is 0.1599. The average count rate is 124 counts per second. The experimental geometry factor is now the count rate times the theoretical geometry factor divided by the count rate in the first position, which is the same. Surprise, surprise. The experimental geometry factor is also 0.1599. Yeah, we have set a baseline for now. We can now calculate everything else. And if we do so, we come up with results like this. But does that make sense? I mean, this is telling us that we are experimentally covering 2.5% of the isotrope radiation sphere, even though the math says that we should only cover 1%. The explanation lies in the fact that I normalize to the highest value. At the highest count rate, you also have the most dead time. The further we move away, the lower the dead time becomes because the count rate also decreases. So while you are covering a smaller percentage of the surface, you effectively count more of the area that you do cover because fewer photons simply pass through the detector due to the reduced dead time. This is one way to argue it. You could also normalize it the other way around and argue using backscattering effects. In summary, for the discrepancies between our values, two factors contribute to the difference between the theoretical and the experimental values, both of which cannot be accounted for in the geometry factor as calculated. For closer samples, there is an increased dead time due to the higher count rate, and for samples that are further away, backscattering effects come into play. A special thanks goes to the Working Group of Analytics and Fundamental Nuclear Chemistry from Dr. Erik Strupp and the Division of Nuclear Chemistry at the University of Cologne, and to my Patreons. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.